Right now we're going to start working with polyatomic ions, naming and formulas. So really the best way to go and learn the polyatomic ions is to write them out, full formula, full charge. Flashcards really don't work for this because then you're not actively writing. If you're actively writing, then you're actively learning. So that's just going to be something that you have to go and learn on your own. And there's a whole table of them in your book probably. Okay, so for the purposes of this, if you can recognize a polyatomic ion, that's enough. So if you're given the name of a molecule containing a polyatomic ion, you should be able to derive the formula. Or if you're given the formula, you should be able to derive the name. Okay, and so let's go through some examples of this. So looking at the first one, ammonium, we know this is on the list. Ammonium is N H4 plus, it's important to have the entire formula, the number of atoms of each, and the charge. Carbonate, we know that that one is CO3 2 minus. It's important to know the number of atoms, it's also important to know the charge. So, when these combine, we ha it's important to keep the polyatomic ions independent. Okay, and what I mean by that is, remember, for ionic, uh, this is really an ionic bond. We have a positive and a negative. Polyatomic ions, when they combine, they form ionic bonds. So our charges are going to flip. So what this means is that this charge is going to become the number of atoms of ammonium. But ammonium is this whole thing. So this, too, we're going to use parentheses to indicate that this is the whole thing and that there's going to be two of this whole thing. Uh, and that's because polyatomic atoms work as one unit. So we treat this as one unit and the parentheses kind of indicate that. And then similarly our plus over here is going to become the number of atoms of this. There's just one of those. So that makes it a little simpler. So our final answer here is going to be parentheses. NH4, and we have two of them. We have two ammoniums and only one carbonate, so we don't need parentheses for the carbonate. So this is the formula for ammonium carbonate that is correct using the flips of the charges. Okay, calcium nitrate. So we know calcium is not a polyatomic ion that's on the periodic table. We're all set with that. Nitrate, this is a polyatomic ion, and it is NO3 minus. Okay, so like we mentioned before, this is going to flip and become the number of nitrates. This charge is going to flip and become the number of calciums. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to have one calcium ion because we have one charge in the nitrate. And we're going to end up with two nitrates. So go ahead and draw out what you think that's going to look like. Pause the video. Okay, so NO3, we're going to have two of those because that comes from this. The nitrate is one unit, so we need the parentheses to designate that. Okay, so that's if you're given the name, you should be able to drive the formula. This is definitely the hardest part because you have to know what this means. Okay, so barium, oh sorry, BASO4 is going to be the next one. We have to derive the name from this. And looking at these, knowing that they're ionic, you just kind of name the ions in order. So you also have to be able to recognize the polyatomic ion and write its name. So here, we're just splitting it to its component parts. First part is, of course, barium, which I already told you. Second part, SO4 minus. We know that is the polyatomic ion sulfate. Okay, and that's it, barium sulfate. Okay, so go ahead, take a moment and write what you think, pause the video, write what you think this name is, and then come back and check. Okay, so our answer here, first part is potassium. And second part, MnO4, that's a polyatomic ion, that's called permanganate. So potassium, it's the first part, permanganate. So here's our polyatomic ion there. 
barium, and there's our polyatomic ion there. Or as you see in ammonium carbonate, you can have two polyatomic ions together. So it's very important to understand and to really know the names and the formulas.